Nerf's Ultra Dart has been the bane of adult foam flingers and parents alike since its introduction, counting quarters as each dart flies off into the bushes. Can the Ultra select and the pinpoint dart save it? My answer? Maybe? Hi, I'm KT, and this is the Nerf Ultra Select. It's just started appearing in Walmarts over the last week or so, kind of ahead of its expected release date, so it's been fun just seeing it pop up in different places. In this video, I mostly want to talk about the new Pinpoint Ultra Dart. We will definitely be talking about the Blaster plenty, but before anything else, can we please talk about this packaging? Um, I kind of wish I did an unboxing on, on video, but there's no plastic here other than some tape. Um, this box opens up and the blaster pulls right out with just a piece of cardboard on the stock, a piece of cardboard on the muzzle, and then the darts in this paper bag wrapped in the manual. They finally did it. Nerf's been working on this for a while. They've been trying to eliminate the plastic from their packaging and, and they're pretty much there. Um, I can rip the tape off of this and recycle everything in this package, although my kids probably want to keep the box because they're like that. But I, I'm impressed. Uh, even the Sonic Screamers that I picked up for this video, um, they are entirely a cardboard package except for this little plastic window and they actually put visibly in the window, the recycle number one, um, it's PET, which is supposedly the most recyclable plastic that you can find in a package like this. So it's come a long way. Uh, I'm pretty impressed by that. You can compare that to something like the Dart Zone package for the Spectrum. It's pretty respectable. It's definitely almost entirely cardboard, but you can see all these little plastic ties are kind of falling off. And these blister packs are the worst thing. So for the time being, Nerf has the leg up in the packaging game for sure. The Ultra Ammo itself has been justifiably maligned for its low accuracy and high cost. Uh, and most of the blasters that Nerf has released for it have been subpar at best, with only a couple exceptions. The Select comes to the table with a couple new things. First, it's fully automatic, which is a first for the Ultra series. Second, it has this unique switching system for the magazine that allows you to switch between two loaded mags. The idea being that you'd load each one with a different type of ammo for different situations. The blaster has an integrated stock that holds six C-cell batteries on the left side. Uh, there is a tactical rail on top that holds most Nerf accessories. There's a jam door, which unusually does not activate a safety to turn off the motors when it's open. This is relatively new, and I've already seen some people suggesting that this is Nerf cheaping out on the design. I think it's actually a really clever move, because not only are they decreasing production costs and reducing the amount of electronics in the blaster, they have not lost any safety features because the way that this blaster is designed, you really can't get a finger into the flywheels like you could on a Strife or a Rapid Strike or any of the other blasters uh, historically that have that space. The spacing is just different. There's a smaller opening that doesn't really allow for anything to be stuck in there that's not supposed to go in there. And as a result, they've also eliminated a potential major failure point. Uh, these doors have a tendency to slide open, and in fact, this one does not lock in place in the open position. Uh, it only locks in the closed position. And as soon as that falls open, your blaster stops working, and kids always have a hard time figuring out why that's happening. So this is a good simplification in my book. While Nerf did include the tactical rail on the top of the blaster, they didn't include any kind of detachable sight. Now, the blaster does have a decent pair of iron sights on the top of the blaster that do line up pretty well. This thing is kind of a funky way to make that happen, but they really wanted to have the integrated carry handle on there, so I guess they had to raise the front sight up. But for a blaster that markets itself with a pinpoint ammo type, optics on top is a weird omission. Uh, I did go through my collection and I found a couple things that I thought looked pretty nice with this. I've got this weird old modulus one that I think actually looks quite good on the blaster. I also dug out this scope that came with a Fortnite SR. I think this looks quite nice. This is very much a look that my kids would appreciate. Of course, these optics aren't gonna do you any favors when you're actually trying to aim, but ultimately, the Ultra Ammo isn't doing you any favors either. 
Uh, we'll get to that, but um, I think that this would have been a fun inclusion to have some kind of optics on top of a blaster uh, of this type. The most unique feature of this blaster is this front grip that looks like a priming handle, but what it actually does is it switches between the two magazines. It's a really simple operation. It's very intuitive. My nearly 10 year old figured out how it worked in about five seconds without looking at the manual. And um, it works very smoothly. I've never seen it jam or have any issues. It always switches back and forth cleanly. Uh, it's pretty impressive, honestly. The magazines themselves fit into these cage-like mag wells that allow you to see how much ammo you have through the semi-clear magazine all the way up to the last dart. That's a really great answer to the age-old question of whether to use opaque magazines or clear ones. When you use a clear magazine, you can tell how much ammo you have, but so can your opponents if they're looking carefully. If you use an opaque one, you keep that information secret, but you have to count your ammo. With this dark black magazine, I'm pretty sure only you are going to be able to see what's going on there. Um, and the ability to see through the magwell solves a lot of problems with a lot of other blasters where the magwell is opaque and you put the clear magazine in and then you can't see your last few darts anyway. They even went so far as to include one magazine with one side clear and the other magazine with the other side clear. So no matter which magazine you're using, you can always see how many darts you have left. The mags themselves are 10 round ultra magazines. They're compatible with the magazines that come with the Ultra Faro, which are similar, but yellow on the back instead of black. Uh, and with the six round magazine that comes with the Ultra Amp. Um, you can also buy these magazines separately, although I think only clear on one side. They come with 10 ultra darts. Um, we'll have to wait and see if they come out with a pack that maybe has the other, other side clear magazine with pinpoint darts. The magazine release on this is interesting. It's ambidextrous in kind of an unusual way. Each magazine has its own release and each one is individually quite easy to use, but you do have to switch over to get this one out easily. Um, you're never gonna be able to release one handed. You're never gonna be able to gravity drop, although they won't anyway. Um, but as long as you know which one you're going for and you can switch the blaster to that side and you will have to switch hands really in order to make this work. It is theoretically possible if this one is empty to also pull the other one, but I think that belies some of the best options or the best ways to use this. And one of the nice things about operating this is no matter where the magazine is, it doesn't stop you from operating the blaster. It can detect if there's no darts in the magazine. It will fire the pusher once and then stop. Uh, but it'll let you rev the flywheels no matter what's going on. And again, this is them removing electronic switches and locks from the mechanism and just making it less likely to fail as a result without making it any less safe. The magazine well can also sit in an in-between position that lines up with the blaster, which is nice for storage. Uh, it will rev in this position, but it won't fire. I think this magazine switching system is a great feature. Uh, it's one that my kids were very excited about when I first showed them this blaster and continue to be excited about when they got to play with it. I can also see it being really useful in the field. If you have an active magazine, you run out of darts, you switch to the other one, pull the empty one, pop it away and put a new full magazine back in its place, you have no downtime, you're able to fire that entire time. That's a pretty awesome feature. If you pick up a few extra magazines, you can actually make use of that. Uh, but again, you're gonna have to get those magazines at a decent cost. One little gripe about the magazine, and, and this is a thing that's been going on for a while with Nerf, the diagram on the magazine is a small picture of the dart uh, itself and the shape of the dart. And it's reasonably clear, but the Ultra Dart is an unusually shaped dart. And it was not obvious to my kid at first uh, which way the darts go in, and he complained about that because he loaded them backwards the first time. Um, I was a little confused the first time I looked at it uh, until I compared it to the dart, and I was like, oh yeah, we have that weird tail thing going on. This has been going on for a while. Nerf used to print an arrow on the magazine uh, way back in the day. They stopped doing that, and I eventually took to manually drawing an arrow on my magazines instead. You may wind up needing to do that, except it's pretty hard to draw on a clear black plastic magazine in a way that's helpful, um, especially considering that these two magazines are mirror images of each other. It gets even more confusing in that setting. So I do wish that they had spared a little bit of money on some white ink to paint an arrow or something indicative of which direction to put the darts in the magazine. 
The grip is pretty nice. I'm not going to get into the grip thing. I know that's a whole thing. Uh, it does share its cramped rev trigger. Not exactly, but with the Ultra 2, which has a similar problem with this sort of tiny rev trigger that an adult finger doesn't quite fit on. But ultimately, it works fine. Uh, this might eventually hurt my finger if I was using it for a long day of nerfing, but um, as an adult, I can hold this okay. It feels a little cramped for the bottom part of my hand. My kids were completely comfortable with it. It's much better also than the Ultra 2's thin front that uh, is very awkward for the last couple fingers on your hand. Um, I definitely prefer this grip over the Ultra 2's grip. To fire, you hold down the rev trigger until the motors are revving at full speed, and then you hold down the trigger and it will shoot a stream of darts until you run out of darts. Um, it's full auto, similar to the Rapid Strike, but unlike the Rapid Strike, it's pretty easy to time individual shots. It's pretty responsive when you actually try to just shoot one dart. Uh, the Rapid Strike always had an issue with that stock. Um, I definitely prefer the handling of this blaster over a stock Rapid Strike, not so much a modified one. And as a quick aside, uh, Out of Darts and others have mentioned about Ultra Flywheels being misaligned in previous blasters. I looked down the barrel on this, um, the flywheels seem pretty well aligned, maybe a little bit off on one flywheel, but they're, they're well aligned with the dart path, and I definitely didn't notice any misfires or problems that I would usually attribute to the wheels being out of alignment, although of course if I aligned them perfectly, maybe it would perform even better than it is. Maybe a test for later. And speaking of firing, the Ultra Select comes with 10 original Ultra Darts and 10 of the new Pinpoint Ultra Darts. Now, the original Ultra Darts have a squishy tip and it's rounded and orange. The new Pinpoint Ultra Darts have a squishier red squared tip. The squared tip is of course comparable to all the AccuStrike remakes of various darts over the years. Uh, original AccuStrike Elites and the AccuStrike Megas. This is very much in the same line. I'm honestly not sure how the science is supposed to work around these becoming more accurate because they're less aerodynamic, but otherwise the dart is unchanged aside from being silver. The shape and the material, as far as I can tell, is exactly the same. It's just a new color. And although the Ultra Select doesn't come with them, I also wanted to talk about the Sonic Screamers with the blue tip, equally squishy to the original ones, uh, but of course they have the whistling mechanism on the front, which again, relates back to the whistling megas and the whistling dart tag darts. It's the exact same mechanism, but it's enough different that it seems to cause havoc with their flight path. Uh, and I definitely have noticed them being significantly more erratic, but they definitely do sing impending doom in the air. The sound is very, very fun and kids absolutely love them. Uh, unfortunately, they're atrociously expensive at $18 for 20 darts, most of the places that I've seen them. So I would wait for these to go on sale if you really want a bunch of them. I fired five of each dart type level across my field, followed by five at somewhat of an angle. As a control, I also fired 10 Adventure Force waffle darts, similarly out of an off-the-shelf Adventure Force Spectrum. Ultra darts tend to spiral a bit and turn one way or the other, but most of them stayed in a reasonably straight line from the firing point down the range. In terms of distance, the Sonic Screamers were all over the place, but the regular Ultra darts did reach about 90 feet when angled, and the new pinpoint darts didn't go nearly as far, matching at least one of the promises on the box. Normal Ultra is clearly better for distance, so will pinpoint be better for accuracy? Well, to test that, I fired 10 of each type of dart at this target at 30 feet. I'm recording this before editing the video, so go by what you see on the screen, but it seems to me that pinpoints were mildly more accurate than the normal darts. The Sonic Screamers were again all over the place, but ultimately good old Adventure Force waffles out of the spectrum were the most consistent of all. You can also see the comparative chronograph readings here.
also, ultimately, what do I think of this blaster? Uh, frankly, it surprised me. I, it, not because of its performance, it's pretty normal in terms of blasters from Nerf in general, and Ultra Blasters in particular. It shoots you know, roughly the same numbers, and the darts go far enough. Um, and it's reasonably accurate. It's definitely still Ultra, uh, which is not great compared to just normal darts. But it's just really fun. It's a really fun blaster. I enjoy shooting it. My kids enjoy shooting it. Um, it has this cool, weird mechanism where you can switch the magazines and it works really well. I was expecting this to wind up jamming and causing problems and being irritating or sounding really rickety when you move it, but no, everything on it works great. Uh, they've simplified the design. They've removed electronic locks and found other ways to make those features safe. And I'm impressed by that. I find it to be great and it seems reliable. That's a really big thing is I don't think kids are going to get frustrated by this because it's not going to break on them unexpectedly or the jam door is not going to fall away half, well the jam door may fall halfway open and stay that way, but it won't make the blaster stop working. And I think that that's great. I think that that's a really positive change in their design ethos. So ultimately as a parent, the most important question is would I buy this for my kids? Well, putting aside the fact that I already did, um, I'm not sure how long-term viable a blaster that relies on really expensive ammo that is mostly black, that falls down in the grass with the heavy tip and in first, and is very difficult to find. I I'm not sure how viable that is long-term uh, for my kids having fun with a blaster. Even though its feature base is so great, even though it's probably the best functioning blaster in the Ultra line so far, other than maybe the Ultra 2, um, I'm not sure how much it makes sense. If I was headed to a blaster party uh, and I wanted something that my kids were going to have fun playing with other kids with, I would probably go for something like an Adventure Force Spectrum. But if I really wanted to wow my kids uh, at their own birthday party with a new present, I might consider this, but only if I had the money in my pocket to buy a bunch of extra darts and a couple extra magazines, because that's what's really going to make this blaster fun, is having the extra resources. I'm also not sure that the pinpoint darts are really accurate enough to make it a good time for kids. If the kids can't hit stuff, I say this all the time, if kids can't hit stuff, they're probably not having fun. They don't have to hit every single shot that they make, but they need to make enough of them. I don't know that the Ultra pinpoints are enough of an improvement over the original Ultra darts to make it worth the extra expense. And I do suspect that there's going to be extra expense. When I bought these Sonic Screamers, which are the current fancy dart in the Ultra line, they cost $18 for 20 darts. After taxes, that's a dollar a dart. That's a little much. I'm going to assume that they're probably going to price these darts similarly, and then they're probably going to sell it, I hope, that they're going to bundle it with a magazine. So it's going to be pretty pricey. I feel like it needs to be a lot better than that to warrant that price. So there you have it. That's what I think, both as a parent and as just a Nerf fan and a foam flinging fan in general, of the Ultra Select. Um, I think it's a great blaster that's built really well, and I wish that the new ammo was just more better. Um, I want to know what you think, though. Uh, maybe you saw something in my firing footage that I missed, uh, or maybe you just have opinions. I want to hear about them down in the comments, so please do leave something. Uh, also, be sure to like this video if you enjoyed it, or maybe if you didn't, also. Uh, and throw me a subscription if you haven't already. I'm working on a bunch of new stuff still. i um, hoping to dig back into some more modding things. And um, it should be a good time, so I hope to see you around. Thanks a lot.